study, but there is only one Democrat that is running that will carry on Lynn's legacy and then create one of his own. It is absolutely my pleasure to introduce to you the next congressman from California's 2nd District, Norman Salkman.
1980, Milton Friedman from the Chicago Boys Gang was already on his way to sainthood among the so-called free marketeers. And Phil, you asked him this question like, greed is not the kind of society that we want. And uh, he proceeded to disagree with you, but um, what was your uh, sense then of the crossroads in 1980 for our country around those questions of Wall Street power and greed, and how would you compare that to the crossroads we're at today? I have to confess that when Friedman was on the program, I don't recall the awareness that we have now of what Wall Street was doing to us. Of, I, I'm a slow learner. Uh, the corporatization of our government, all the things that Ralph Nader, Bob, but Senator LaFollette was one of the first to you know, speak up against why are we allowing corporations to have so much control over our lives. Friedman, I remember saying to him, uh, well, well, that is a problem. We do have a maldistribution of wealth. And he said, well, the best way to fix that is just leave the market. Work. Adam Smith's invisible hand. Greed is the best energy out there to keep an economy growing. Even better than you, Phil. We don't, I don't think you're... Uh, you know, and I said, I didn't say anything. I didn't. And I remember then shortly thereafter, I said, if you're so smart, how come you ain't rich? And he said, I am. And so we moved to another side. And that is going around the, uh, that's going around YouTube. And the, I think the interest in it has to do with the movie, Wall Street. Uh, Michael Douglas, Greed is Good, Gordon Gekko, I think the name of the character. And here was, uh, in 1980, here was Milton Friedman, essentially saying the same thing. And uh, there is an open treatment that uh, hardcore uh, coterie of people out there who continue to subscribe to his University, University of Chicago uh, philosophy and economic uh, theories. And he rose to power, won the Nobel Prize. And he was a, he was a messianic guy. He, he knew it was good for you. You mentioned Adam Smith, and it's amazing how the truisms of the past get recast. And if we don't pay attention, then the entire frame of reference shifts rightward. And I think an example is Adam Smith, because Adam Smith, who right is a hero even of fairly conservative economics uh, economists, said uh, that labor creates all wealth. But to hear not only Republicans but many Democrats are certain so many pundits talk, it's the other way around. Uh, wealth, we're encouraged to believe, creates all labor. And you hear people strutting around saying, I created thousands of jobs because they're wealthy. So what gives with that? Well, the uh, net profit is the coin of the realm. Just as in our intelligence, the size of the audience is the coin of the realm. And, and as long as that's the carrot out there, it's counterintuitive for companies not to seek it. It's counterintuitive, as, as our culture has been shaped, for a member of Congress to appear to be against the free enterprise system. This is our national religion. So consider what we have here. We have at the center of our fundamental of our lives, uh, economic questions that are not even on the table. And we continue to go on, and it gets worse, and finally we're looking up now, and Wall Street is cooking its cigar ashes on the people. This, they've become the cartoon. This could be worse, and the American people are making fun of the Occupy Wall Street world. It isn't that everyone is. And let's remember, when we're making our judgments about what's popular, you know, the dissent doesn't get on television. You know, you won't see Norman Solomon on Meet the Press. Uh, it, it, they, they want the power. They want to talk to cabinet members, vice presidents. The big get is, of course, the president himself. They're, they're attached to power.
top. You know, if the, they want they want the White House to call them back, and that's the first step to do. Now, now it gets to be Henry Kissinger. David Halberstam told me you can't have dinner with Henry and cover Henry. And the mainstream press in Washington is having dinner all the time with people in power. And it's a lot, the reason fraternization in the military will get you the brink is because it's hard to shoot a guy after he's shown you a picture of his kids. The, the energy goes out of the soldier if he knows the enemy. And the energy goes out of reporters who go to dinner with Henry, or in more contemporary times, Joe Biden or whoever is, I mean, it's a big deal to get these people. Some of you saw the film this afternoon. You saw the way they suck up the power at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. That is something the mainstream press waits for. They mark the calendar. It's a big deal, a big deal. And every woman who's invited buys a very expensive dress. And as you saw, may have seen in our film, you know, George Bush got up and said, those uh, weapons of mass destruction must be somewhere. Ha, ha, ha. And that's the, and this is the insulation of oh, uh, Washington. You know, they, they don't get to the screens. They're talking to each other. They're powerful. They know things we don't know. So just leave them alone, and you can shut up and say it. And that's how we got here. And that's why I'm supporting Norman. For Congress. I mean, really, he is, uh, we need him so bad. And I'm happy.